Welcome to another episode of Straight Up. I'm Victor Marquez. I'm here with Rick Thorsell, Neil Batang, and our guest, Dr. Shannon Boyd. Today on Straight Up, we have Dr. Shannon Boyd, owner and chiropractic physician at Boyd Chiropractic and Rehab. Dr. Boyd received her undergraduate degree in biological sciences from Northern Illinois University, where she was a member of NIU's Division I cheerleading team. During her time at NIU, she was also a national cheerleading and gymnastics coach. Dr. Boyd is a graduate of Palmer College, where she received her doctorate in chiropractic and physiotherapy. Wow. Welcome. That's a lot. Welcome. <laughs> it's quite a resume yeah. right there. Nice to meet Very you. Very accomplished. Thank How you. are you doing? Very good. good. Thanks. Good. How about you guys tonight? Doing all right. We're well. <laughs> wish it was warmer yeah. outside, but dealing yeah. with the cold. Yeah, wish it was warmer. I just got back from Florida. You just got back from Florida? Where I mean, Florida? that's where, yeah, I was there for four years, four and a half years. When did you, uh, when did you come back to Chicago? Um, I moved back officially like the first week of July. Okay. So this is my first winter back. I couldn't, do, I couldn't do the warm weather because I feel like I'm more productive when it's cold and I kind of humble myself during the winter time. Really? Like you just stay inside? And exactly. And I, fo- I focus and I'm humbled, but then when it's warm, I get a when little... Like when it, exactly. He's, he's, he's a cocky exactly. a-hole. No one wants Not to cocky, but I do so tend to have him. a little more fun. <laughs> That's how it goes normally. But. Uh, I got gotcha. you. So tell us, uh, what, are you, what are you doing now? You are a doctor in chi- chi- chiropractic? Yep. Okay. So I'm a chiropractic physician. Um, so I started my own practice when I moved back in July. Yeah. And that's my practice in Wheaton. But I'm also practicing in two other offices. They're not ones that I own, but I practice as an independent doctor there. So one's in Gurney and one's downtown in River North. How, I mean, how did you come to this point? I mean, we read a little bit about your bio and the injuries that you, back pain that you had to yeah. deal with. And how did that all progress to culminate in becoming a doctor and owning a couple of uh, clinics? Um, so I was always super active with sports and athletics. You always get a couple injuries, yeah. Yeah. do different therapies to heal. Um, and I think in undergrad, that's when I really got my first experience with a chiropractor. I hurt myself. I was doing, I was cheerleading for college, but I was also coaching club cheerleading. So it was just a lot like with my shoulders, a lot with my neck, and then tumbling is just, everybody gets back pain from that. So I went to a friend and they suggested a chiropractor. One was downtown and one was here in Wheaton, right by where we grew up. Mm -hmm. So on a winter break, I was home from NIU and I went to the chiropractor and he hurt, he like, he fixed my shoulder that I'd hurt in one visit. So I asked if I could observe some other patients, and I like asked to look at a bunch of x-rays, and then every winter break, I would go there, I would start to work there every summer break, that's where I was. So what would you say is the most rewarding thing about being a chiropractic, a doctor? So I get to hear a lot of cool stories from patients, just their progress, people who've had pain their entire lives, yeah. finally getting some relief. Um, it's pretty cool, I see three generations in one room. I treated grandpa, his dad, and their two daughters. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Today I heard a pretty crazy story from one of my patients. So after I adjusted him, he told me that he had some like balance and coordination issues. And I asked how, you know, how did it start? And he was, he was in Afghanistan and he used to fill the tires for their tanks. And usually they fill them in a cage and this day, either they ran out of cages or they They didn't have enough, and that was his job, and the tire blew up in his face. So the truck flew into the air, he flew into the air, and landed on top of some some piece of the truck, and Mm -hmm. he's, like, lost his hearing, has had a lot of middle ear issues, which throws off your balance and coordination. So working with him for a few weeks, he said now, like, his response to things is a lot faster, his coordination, his balance, he can hear a little better, his ears don't ring all the time. Hmm. So just different stories it's not always about your back pain or ankle pain you know and that was pretty cool so what's the difference between then if you could elaborate what you do between that and a physical therapist okay so i'm also board licensed in physiotherapy so i can do physical therapy for injuries and anything like that okay um that's just a secondary thing though to what i do that's a supplement to the chiropractic adjustment so my main thing is adjusting bones, adjusting joints. All the joints in your spine, your elbows, your fingers, anything that's bony. Um, physical mm. therapists usually do a lot of muscle and soft tissue work. So they can't do the 
the bony adjustment, the manipulation, but they're they're good for mm-hmm. like muscle rehab, a lot of muscle injury things. Okay. So sometimes there are some that are more specialized, you know, in injury than I am. So I'll just go send send patients there, refer them back and yeah. forth. Right on. But we're different. Cool. cool. It's good though to for a patient to see a chiropractor and a physical therapist. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the dual uh, responsibility of both being a doctor and owning a business. What is oh, that? Pro- what has that process been like? Oh I don't know gosh. too many young people who have gone out and opened their own business, especially having a, a doctorate under their belt. Yeah, it's n- it's not what I plan to do, but I'm glad that that's the path that I chose. What's the most rewarding part about it? Um, really, just the stories that your patients tell you. Some days you think like, did I even help this person? Did I do anything? And then they'll tell you their next visit. I was finally able to start working out again. I was able to run with my husband. So things like that, it's just, it's rewarding to hear. And you feel good, like helping people and you notice their energy changes. It really helps your own energy. What's the most difficult thing you encountered when getting your doctorate degree? What was the most difficult or frustrating thing going through the process? Oh my gosh, yeah. So um, (laughs) there was this one time, I think it was during finals, and everybody is just scatterbrained. So we had this one teacher who taught x-ray radiology. So it was going over all x-rays, different fractures, different cancers, patterns of looking through x-rays and MRIs. And she was the hardest teacher we had. If you came into class two minutes late, she made you walk out. She marked you as absent and counted against your grade. But so this one test, she had us all turn in our test before we walked out. And I looked at the pile. I guess I put my test back in my backpack and I went home. Oh, no. When I got Uh-oh. home, I was opening the, I was opening my bag, and I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I have my test here. What am I going to do? So I had to go back. I, that was the one time that I cried at school because she was just like, well, you know, there's nothing we can do. Maybe you can make it up on the next one. She ended up talking to somebody else. They let me retake it. I got oh. a better grade anyways. But. <laughs> this was in Florida? Oh. Yeah. Makes I could have had sense. to retake a whole – like semester, a whole quarter of class because of that. Wow. Mm-hmm. What part of Florida were you living in? Port Going Orange, to... right by Daytona Beach. Right by Daytona Beach. Yep. Okay. That was nice. We'd go study on the beach. We'd have a little, like an hour between class. That's the dream. If I were to go to graduate school, I'd have to <laughs> yeah. go someplace Florida, warm. Aside from all the hurricanes. Uh, hey, no, great we people, had just, warm you, weather. You, <laughs> we had maybe like two tropical storms all the oh, time okay. we were there. People yeah. loved it because the waves got bigger, but... No, he's not meant for warm weather. He's yeah. not a warm weather dude. That's Actually, why I have the like beard, you know? No. Uh, so roughing it up up here in the wild north. Keep you warm. <laughs> Keep you warm. You'd be surprised how effective it is as a wind block. Yeah. Yeah, you don't got a beard. That's because... You, you know I've always struggled to grow facial <laughs> hair. I was it's about just to say that, thing. but I didn't want to, like, put you on blast. Yeah, she asked anything. me the question, not true. <laughs> But, yeah, that's why I just grow it up top because I make up for the lack at the bottom. I gotcha. But talk about performing an adjustment because I read somewhere that a lot of people, when they seek a doctor in your field, they look for someone that's normally a guy because they believe that they're naturally stronger, can better adjust the kinks in someone's (laughs) back compared to a girl. What do you say to kind of defend yourself in your position? So that's also been something that's pretty difficult just for one, being a female doctor and then being younger, when people come in, they're come into the office, they'll be like, oh, well, where's the doctor? Or I'll hear them talk to the other secretary and say, okay. oh, who's the new girl working here? Like, oh, okay, so wow. maybe I need to just dress a little different. Do I need to wear my coat? But I learned from a female doctor in clinic. So we go through clinicals, like, yeah. like um, med school, same thing. Mm-hmm. So she was a female she taught us really how to use your body weight to, to do adjustments. Because I have patients who are, I mean, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, some basketball players who are, I think my tallest patient is, was like 6'7". Uh, so just really using your body weight for leverage because it's important that you don't hurt yourself as a doctor, bef- like first of all. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to get anything done. But it's really about speed, technique and speed. It's not about strength. So we've had... Yeah, some of the bigger guys in our classes were not some of the best adjusters. Hmm. But it's really about technique. So So you have to own your skill. Yeah, has that presented any sort of challenges when it comes to starting up your business in any Um, way? So that's been really a good selling point for me. 
since I was with that chiropractor before studying and kind of shadowing under him, I got to learn some adjustments before I ever went to school. Nice. So that was like really Inside my strong track. point. Yeah, it was yeah. adjusting before I had ever got there. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you go to a lot of seminars. You find some electives at school. I mean, they just introduce you into little different different fields of chiropractic. Some doctors, they only focus on the neck. Some only focus on the hips. I took seminars that we do different brain balancing things. So just really owning your skill. Yeah. So what do you focus on then? If you So I like to do the adjustments. I'm, I don't just focus on the spine. I'm really big with extremities, so elbows, knees, shoulders, ankles. Mm-hmm. I was an athlete, so athletes hurt more than just their back. Yeah. I got to treat a couple of Bears players. Their knees were big things. Yeah, I saw that on your website. Yeah, very, so sports injuries cool. has been pretty big. I want to start getting into some pediatrics and maybe, like, some kids, athletes, stuff yeah. like that. kids. Yeah. They respond to chiropractic so fast. I know. I can bounce back. Yeah, it seems really like quickly. there's more of a need with that these days too. Oh yeah, these it's kids like... walking around with like helmets and all that is it's so bad. Sometimes adjusting loosens, uh, different sutures, different skull bones loosens. You know, th- bones in the neck for colicky babies, babies with ear infections, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's it's important for little kids too. That's awesome. Good but somehow you. I turned into the sports chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there is there just more business? You think with people that are athletes like the need or the demand to do what you do with athletes compared um, to they're definitely more demanding on their bodies because they get injured more right. often and they just require more out of their body okay you know so they need to put a little bit more into it but i don't think that there's a need for them more than any normal person you know? would you say shannon that most of your patients are are, are caucasian or are, are white no they're not Mm-mm. What would you say the demographic of patients you treat range from? Most of them are black. Okay, so most of them are African American. Yeah, see, he couple. asked that because he read a study that said something like, "Was it ninety-seven percent? Ninety-seven percent of people that see receive chiropractic. chiropractic treatment are white." So, what yeah. I want to ask you I have personally: a couple of Hispanic patients. Okay, wow, that's crazy. I mean, actually, in Florida, most of my patients were white, but okay, okay. How do you, how do you how do you believe? Um, I've never even I never thought about that. Yeah, though. as a minority in this field. Well, and that also you can growing that up like in DuPage County, there's less black people. Yeah. Period. Okay. But I still that's my majority of patients. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's a. Where's it, this study from? I want to see it. Global. Yeah. It was called <laughs> Global Health. Wikipedia. Global Wikipedia Health. That's right. Globalhealth.com. It's actually, an article I wrote myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm you really can, happy he remembered it. Was just like, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Glo- <laughs> Globalhealth.com. See, I will, always, always know your sources, man. Al- always had the sharpest memory. Okay. One of the sharpest in high school, if you don't remember. But I remember. Yeah. How do, <laughs> how do we increase the uh, the awareness though in the minority community? Like, how do you think we can get of people the need better for informed? Practice. Exactly. Um. You know what? It's really. Word of mouth is a big thing. If you have a positive experience with any doctor, really, you should share it. Um, but that's a good question. It's something that I haven't really looked into. That's is something I guess for the future that I could kind of look into. Look into that. Um, but speaking of it, my dad actually does a lot of business for minority-owned companies. Okay. So, I mean, that would be something maybe we could both kind of do together. Yeah. Do a lot of people that you see. You treat them for things that are as a result of, like, uh, you know, lifting or sports? Or are there a lot of people that you see who come in as a result of just not having a very active lifestyle? And maybe they are helping someone move, and because all of a sudden that shock to their body, they then have to come see you. No, it's definitely both. But the response, oh, sorry, an athlete's body will respond a lot faster to treatment because they're more conditioned, as in someone who hasn't been exercising. Their back went out when they went to reach for something, they were lifting something, their body responds a lot slower, those muscles are deconditioned, those nerves are even deconditioned, so they're going to need a little bit more aggressive treatment to get better, whereas a body that's conditioned and exercising responds a lot faster to treatment. Do you see a lot of people, like let's go back to people who are who do sports or active lifestyle or whatnot, uh, a lot of people that you see, would you say some of them when they see you, it's just a result of years of wear and tear? Or do you see a lot of people who just overwork their body? You know, you, you know, get both. both. So you have some people, they woke up and they don't know what they did. And it's been like this for a few days. 
So you get some of that. You get some of the wear and tear, the repetitive motion from work, overhead lifting, and then you just get some injuries from athletes. But that's what's really been the fun part of the job. Like, you don't know what you're going to get, especially on a Saturday. Saturday mornings are my crazy days. Really? Because patients get hurt over the weekends. Chiropractors usually aren't open on Fridays. So you get, like, the most extreme their wives are helping them walk and like yeah, they the cry brace. when they take off their shoes because their back hurts so oh bad. God, mm -hmm. But that's that's fun though. It's on like it keeps you on your toes. It's never the same. So no is patient is ever the same. Like an investigation, like a mystery yeah, of like. It's what it is. Oh, that's fun. It is. It's fun. Has like the, let me figure out what you do. Okay, that makes sense. Why this hurts? Okay, were you doing this? Like, you get to ask twenty one questions. Has there ever been a case where you've just been totally perplexed as to what is wrong with this person that you just can't figure out what? Or are you relatively deductive? So there's been this one male patient, and no matter what I would do, he he said, <laughs> he said he had the same amount of pain. He had better range of motion, but he always had this low back pain. And he was a he was an older guy, and he went to he had, what? No, I already no, know no, he no, just is no, saying no, that. No, so no, like, you can, he like, can like you can like massage. That's what I was thinking. No, like, no, he no, was no, like no, trying no. to like he was. <laughs> he was like saying that I was unexperienced because uh, he went to uh, on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Went more, to more, more psychological. Yeah. In in the office pain. that I'm in in Gurney, there was a lady. She sold her office um, to another female doc. So I help her and I treat all the patients that she left. So he was like, "Well, the doctor that I used to see, she would just dig in there real good." And then he was like, "But maybe she was more experienced than you." So. <sighs> That's cool. he's, he's probably, he was probably just crushing you know, all the female go, doctors find there. someone else. Yeah. Like, maybe problem. I'm not the yeah. doctor for you. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sure but, if he walked in and saw a male the doctor, thing is, no he'd be doctor is for it. everybody though. Everyone, everybody is going to respond to things differently. Mm. So yeah. I'm not for everybody. I know this acupuncture mm -hmm. girl, like a specialist a doctor, and she tells me that a lot of people in her field and in your field are struggling to get respect in the medical field or in the science For industry sure. because they kind of reject the whole holistic <laughs> nature of what you guys do. Well, there was a whole thing years ago. MDs and chiropractic, the ACA, they sued each other. So chiropractors sued MDs because MDs were publishing a lot of work saying that chiropractic doesn't work and hmm. telling their patients not to see them, which is it's neglectful to not, yeah. you know, give and allow another treatment yeah. that's beneficial. Yeah. But so... The ACA, American mm -hmm. Chiropractic Association, they won. And MDs had to, like, I don't know, ban or take away all the stuff that they had already put in yeah. print. And, I mean, some of them still don't believe in chiropractic. But that's been a battle for, like, 80 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is a battle that you've been forced to fight at any Yeah, but point. some MDs are really good. A lot of DOs are good about referring patients. And then you have some that came from families of doctors who are so anti-chiropractic. I went to the same doctor my whole life. Basically, I just stopped going to a pediatrician a few years ago. <laughs> nice. But she, when I told her that I was going to chiropractic school, she was, she like disowned me. Oh. It's like, at least make, promise me that your patients will get vaccines. Promise me that you'll do this. I'm just like, that's not my belief in practice. So yeah. I've known her my whole life and she was very anti-chiropractic. Wow. My mm -hmm. dad um, knows somebody that's been a dentist, I think, for like 30-something years. And I had a conversation with her, and they were telling me like how when people will refer, you know, a dentist will refer someone to an orthodontist or how, whatever yeah. avenue people take. Right. He, this person, this woman was saying like how much, I guess you could say, corruption she's seen in unnecessary referrals. Oh, yeah. Unnecessary. Oh, like, yeah. Talk a little bit about that in your particular industry. No, there's a ton of that, even with with pain, prescription pills, things like that. If a doctor is getting paid by a certain company, they're going to push that product, whether it's the best for that specific patient or not. Or, you know, I'll send you to my friend who they'll take an image that maybe you don't necessarily need, but if you have good insurance, a lot of doctors will do that to max out people's insurance and max out benefits. But just like there's, I mean, good docs, there's bad docs. So you have to be careful with who you go to, really, for anything. Is there a way for the average person to know who's a good doc and who's a bad one? Try to, I mean, Google, see some reviews. Yeah, if you can, you can, you can find a doctor by word of mouth or somebody that, if you have a doctor you trust, somebody that they refer you to is usually a good fit. Mm. But, yeah. 
try to ask somebody with a similar condition who found some progress, some success with. In your experience, Shannon, are a lot of health insurance companies reluctant or hesitant to give their clients medical coverage so it for just, chiropractors? It depends. A lot of them are good with it. Um, like Blue Cross, Blue Shield, yeah. Cigna, Aetna, things like that. They're pretty good. They'll usually give their patients, say, 20 or 25 visits. And you can use those throughout the year that they'll pay either 80 or 100% of. Um, but they give you a discounted rate. So insurance is never going to pay us the full amount of the bill. They have they have rates that they've already agreed to with whenever you get credentialed with insurance. That's what you accept. So... With an MD, sometimes you'll get reimbursed more on the same code. So you'll get paid differently if you have another doctor sign your notes. So sometimes they'll have clinics. I was in one clinic like that where they had an MD there to sign off on notes so they got reimbursed more. But insurance does cover most chiropractic care. They just don't pay you as well all the time. And in your position, you are empowered to prescribe medication. So that's, when needed. that's against our philosophy. Okay. We are natural healing. So no toxins. That's one of our things that we are against. Good, good. Because I do believe that we are overly medicated as a society. Well, yeah, there's so many people in rehab centers right now for prescription pills. Like that's the number one addiction in America right now is prescription pills. You think it's okay because my doctor gave it to me. Well, it only takes 20 days to form a habit. So if you took a pill for a month, guess what? You're going to want to keep taking it. And yeah. guess what? Your insurance is now paying thousands and thousands of dollars to these pill companies for 10 and 20 and 30 years. Yeah. What did uh, what did Eddie Griffin say? It's supposed to treat one thing and it has oh, six it side you, effects. I have a poster that says that. It's like, <laughs> oh, like, it's like I take my Prilosec for my acid reflux that's caused by all the ibuprofen that I take because of my whatever. But it's just all these pills give you side effects and then you take another pill for that side effect. Yeah. And then your body can't heal. It's just so much toxins. Crazy. Yeah, it really slows down your body. No. Well, we were, wasn't there somebody who we were talking about before who had like a pill box like for every day of the week that had like seven different pills and she's yeah like, um, the average person takes like years old. 13 a pills or something yeah. yeah and these drug companies are no different than i guess you can say you know the drug lords bringing in uh no but they're and legal heroin, but and they're so legal they and they're legal yeah. and the war isn't and the yeah, war the is on paper gets, the war yeah. is all on paper it's government not government gets money yeah. for it drug industry it costs like a billion dollars to make a pill but the drug industry is multi-billion dollar industry so Anything that generates that much money, there's going to be some, somebody's going to get sketchy with it. Oh, for sure. So you have patients asking you about marijuana as a med- oh medicinal gosh. treatment. I can't imagine. <laughs> they see that doctor and they're like, oh, Hello. that's. Oh my gosh, my patients ask me <laughs> the weirdest things. Yeah, they'll ask that like in a clinic full of people. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know anybody that I can get a marijuana card from? Or what do you think about this? And so I just have to tell them there's benefits and, you know, some negatives to everything, yeah. but it's not legal here. So if you are in a place where it's legal, go ahead if that's what works for you, but I can't. You can't be condone an such no, behavior. That is so funny. You know, I my doctor's been hating. Let me check out my chiropractor right quick. <laughs> yeah, I could come up with this prescription. That's so funny. Doctor so like Boyd, they, they go down the list, and, and finally, chiropractor is right. uh, the last yeah. doctor of last Yeah, we're resort. trying to get like disability <laughs> cards, you know, so you can park oh, in the yeah. handicap spot. <laughs> work. Notes for work? That's what it is. Like, I'm not going to excuse you for a month of work when I saw you, like, one time. That no, is so that. funny, really. Uh-huh. Because yeah. I'm trying to get out of a week of work, so I might hit you up. <laughs> Go see my <laughs> yeah. chiropractor, Shannon Boyd, right? So, you own three clinics? No. Own one. You own one. practice in another You practice two. at other two. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, what's next for you? I mean, that's already a really great start by the age of 28. I really just want to focus on building my patients. Um, I want to try to get more involved with, I said before, some children, some student athletes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe going back to some cheer gyms that I used to coach in. That'd be cool. Yeah, and adjusting there because club cheerleading, cheerleaders have the most neck and back injuries of any sport. It's like every cheerleader I talk to is is. just a walking injury. All three of them, right, No, I I mean, obviously football is real dangerous, but like cheerleading, People don't know, but that's like an extremely dangerous thing. Yeah, they have the most neck and spinal cord injuries of any sport. Jeez. Football's right under it, but 
Wait, cheerleaders get more neck and spine injuries than yeah. football players? Yep. Wow. Maybe they should be wearing helmets. Pads or helmets. Yeah. I saw some nasty injuries in college. Yeah. I saw a girl fracture her eye socket in cheerleading practice. So when you're throwing girls up and they're spinning and flipping, you're either going to get kicked, knee to elbow. She got an elbow straight to her Ouch. eye socket and fractured her orbital bone. She get a plate put in her face. Mm. That's how girls get their nose broken this one day. This girl took off her mask. She had a whole little mask like so she could still go to practice. She did it off maybe one week early. The, within 30 seconds of her taking it off, she got nicked on the nose. Ugh. And it broke again. Oh God. So I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> I'm going to see if you change. I asked you this question, I want to say like 13 years ago. Let's see if your answer is the same. Okay. Shannon Boyd. What? Is cheerleading a sport? Heck yes, it is. Wow, I love how just by that immediate <laughs> look, I knew the answer to that question. All right, then she hasn't changed yes. it up on us much yes, at all, guys. Cool. Do you think it is? I've always thought it was a sport. Okay. Person, I, well, then we're still friends. <laughs> I, I, I remember you I remember you like explained it to us one time, like, this is why. And I, I guess I didn't think that of it that way. That was one of the way. hardest sports I've, I've ever done. Yeah. Cheerleading and probably snowboarding. It's real, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so where can people find you again? Name the... The areas that you practice again, and obviously you have a website. What's the URL yeah. for the website? Talk about how people so can find you. So my website is www.drboyd, spelled out D-O-C-T-O-R-B-O-I-D.com. Um, my three locations are on there. My main one is Wheaton right here. Um, it's within the big health source building right next to Seven Doors on Roosevelt and President. Uh, the second one that I'm in is Gurney. It's called Delaney Chiropractic Center. That's also on my website. And then my fun office in River North downtown. <laughs> it's called the Chicago Fix. Is that the medical marijuana dispensary? No. Not but they do have, they have medical <laughs> doctors there. They do yeah. like Botox there. They have all kinds of docs. So. Cool. And what sort of clients do you take on? So they're really in all areas. They're kind of different clientele. The River North is more of like some socialites, people getting off right after work. Um, Gurney has been my older patients, older clientele, and then Wheaton is more of my athletes, some younger patients. So I get a nice mix. Cool. That's what's yeah. up. If I ever need an adjustment, you'll be the yeah, first person I hit up. I'm going like, to I've sure never been to a chiropractor before. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys are all going to get adjusted. Yeah. We, so close. You're, you're <laughs> she close. said you guys are all going to get adjusted. <laughs> yeah. It's inevitable. Uh -huh. yeah. Gotcha. Well, um, well, I guess that concludes the episode. We are thank you. out of time. And Dr. Shannon Boyd, thank you very much for coming by. Thanks, and, this uh, was fun. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully and, I can be on another oh, time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. So again, thank you for coming on. And guys, be on the lookout for the next episode straight up. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Bye.